forge of the past. In this episode we're going to be looking at this vintage paraffin stove which was made by a company called Primus who are from Sweden. We're going to be looking at the components it has, how it works and how to operate it. Right, let's have a look at the components um, of this stove. I'm going to take everything off and then explain what they are as I put it back together. So we start with the reservoir itself. So this is deliberately a bulbous shape. It is convex at the bottom to help with the pressure because you have to pressurize these. So the paraffin itself is in liquid form unlike your modern camping stove which uses compressed gas. So first of all we have to compress the paraffin so it is able to travel up the stem into the burner at the top and the way we do this is with this plunger. So if I unscrew this and take it out we can see what's inside. Here we have the plunger on the end of the shaft it's a little bit worn, but believe it or not, you can actually still get replacements for these, which is very handy. Um, so in this hole here, there is a tube that goes down into the cylinder, and at the end of this tube is a, a non-return valve. So the compressed air can be pushed through it, but it can't come back up. Now, as the piston goes up and down the cylinder, when you pull it up like this, the air is forced over the top of the plunger, and it fills the cylinder up with air. Now, when you push it down, the plunger will expand outwards and press against the side of the cylinder and the air has nowhere to go but inside the reservoir. So I'm just going to stick this back in carefully, you just got to get it past the thread and push it down. And I'll screw that back on. There we go. Now the other two things we've got here, this is the filler cap. So with the paraffin it's always good not to fill it up too high but uh, we'll top this up before we light it and then this one here is the pressure relief tap. I take it out completely not that you normally have to do this but it just sits in there and what this is is when you are wanting to switch this off you just loosen this you don't have to take it out you just loosen it and all the pressure will come out through here and it will extinguish the flame at the top so obviously when it is in operation we need to make sure all of these are completely closed so it is a sealed unit so I wind that all the way back in until it's pinched tight you don't have to go too much on it because it is brass after all so quite a soft metal um, so here inside here we've got the jet that goes up to the top so this tiny little component in the middle here that is actually where the paraffin comes out of now in there is a absolutely tiny hole even a sewing needle would be too thick to put down there so if it ever comes obstructed what i tend to use is i will pull out a bristle from a wire brush with some pliers and you can just poke it down the hole and clear it of any obstructions and the paraffin itself will actually have to travel up around these pipes circulating around before it gets to the bottom here and is able to shoot up. So I can demonstrate the paraffin actually coming out. If I were to pump it now, you would see it would start to swell. But you see that is liquid paraffin coming up, not gas. So that won't actually light. There we go, just re release the valve there. So what we have to do is preheat it. So what that means basically is you have to get this hot before you can actually light it and make it function as it should. So that's what this cup is here, is, is here for. This is a reservoir for methylated spirits. So what we do is when we go to light this, we're gonna fill this up and light it here and the fire will heat up all of these pipes and the jet. So when you actually pump the paraffin through, the heat causes the paraffin to turn into vapor. So essentially you're turning it into gas and that is when it will burn like propane or butane. But paraffin won't burn like that unless it is already hot and turned into a gas form. So then at the top here we've got the hole where the gas paraffin will come out, the gas, the vapour, and we have these two components here. So this, this one here works in conjunction with this flame splitter. So what happens is, as the vapour comes up here, it hits the top of this cap which causes it to go down. Now what this does here is it evenly spreads the gas around so it comes out of all these holes like that. So you'll end up with a nice blue flame surrounding it because if you were to take this off and burn it you'd end up with a great big stalk of fire which would be very dangerous and impractical. So we just have the flame splitter on there. The other thing we've got here, this is a draft excluder. 
So if I was to be lighting this outside, methylated spirits do not blow out easily. And what can happen is if there's a strong wind blowing when you're trying to preheat it, you'll end up with a fire over here somewhere because the wind's blowing it and it won't be heating this area up sufficiently. So we can put this around here and it just stops the wind from getting at the flame. So the air can still get through these gaps at the bottom as the hot air will rise, so it will pull in cold air from here and then it can just disperse around the top. But I won't be using this inside because it won't be necessary. And then finally we've just got this plate here which sits nicely. These grooves here will sit like this. If I demonstrate with the frying pan, you don't have to use it, but the frying pan is a lot more likely to fall off without this. So we just stick it on there like that. And then we know when the frying pan is on there, it's a lot less likely to fall off. So it's a good thing to have. So, I think it's time to give it a try and see if we get it to fire up. So first of all, I'm going to check that it's got enough paraffin in there. So I'm going to take off the cap and just top it up a little bit. So I've got a funnel here. This is the paraffin container from my heater that we filmed in an earlier episode which I'm just going to pinch a small amount from. You really, it's best not to overfill these because if you do, the pressure, the area that can pressurize doesn't last as long if it's smaller. So if you have it topped right up to this level here, you'll have to keep pumping it. It's best if you have it lower, uh, the pressure will last for a lot longer. So you can just cook and not have to worry too much. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit in there. There's already some in there. But it really doesn't need much to go. I mean, this thing will burn for hours on on a full tank, uh, and I'm not going to be using it for hours. So, just a little bit will suffice. There we go. I can see it sloshing around in there. So I'll put the cap back on. Now, one thing you've got to remember is when you light these, this is the pressure relief valve, which is how you turn it off. You've got to make sure that this is loose, because even if you haven't pumped it. When you light it, it will tend to seep. I'm not sure if it's the, the sudden change in temperature, but you'll get a paraffin dripping out at the top, which is not good. So it's always good to leave that loose whilst you're heating it up. So here's my methylated spirits. Now meths are favored for preheating paraffin products because it's a very intense heat. It doesn't blow out, um, which is good if you're using these outside, but also it doesn't smoke. So it's a very clean burning fuel. So you pour it in the reservoir here until it's basically full. It doesn't matter if it overflows because it will it will basically combust anyway. So I light it now. You see it's a very kind of blue flame. If you light this outside, quite often you can't actually see the flame at all. And people have, well, friends of mine have been tempted to put their fingers there to see if it's lit and then found, yes it is. Anyone that knows uh, anything about the colour of fire, any kind of blue flame generally is hotter than a yellow flame. So that is very, very hot indeed. So what I'm going to do is let this burn out and once it's completely dry I'm actually going to do it again. My experience with this stove is you have to preheat it twice, otherwise the paraffin won't combust. Okay, so that's burnt out. That's very, very hot. So what I'm going to do is pour a little bit more meths in there, and you'll hear it fizzing. I'm then going to close the valve and start pumping it to get the pressure up. So I'm going to put this in here, so it's nice and hot. I'm going to light it. There we go. I'm going to move the methylated spirits away. Now I'm going to close the valve down here so the pressure won't escape. And I'm going to start pumping now. Now at the moment it won't light particularly well at the top because the flow of air isn't able to get through because the meths are still going. But what happens is when the meths run out the fire transfers from the bottom to the top. So what you're supposed to do is you actually let it burn out and then you pump it and you light it with a spark is the traditional way. But in my experience with that, it's quite unreliable and you get a lot of paraffin vapour and you sometimes get a bit of a fireball 
which can burn your face. So I find the method that I've kind of come up with, which I'm sure other people know about as well, works fine. So now the meths at the bottom have gone out. The fire is now focused at the top. So that's a very intense flame you've got there. So I'm going to keep pumping it just a little bit more so I know the pressure's up really nice and high. And then I'm going to turn the lights off so you can see this flame a bit better. Right, I'm going to turn the lights off. So you can see the actual, the flame splitter is now glowing red. The fire itself is taking the shape of the cup at the top. So it's focusing the, the energy of the flames and it's burning really quite nicely. So if you want it to be on a slow flame, you can release some of the pressure so it drops. But if you do that, you've got to make sure you pump it from time to time. Because if, if it runs out of pressure completely, the paraffin won't be able to travel up and it will just go out. But most of the time, if you're using these camping, you want to have it as hot as possible. So you make sure the pressure is nice and high. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my frying pan. I'll put this holder back on the top there so it gives it just a bit more stability. I'm going to put the frying pan on there. There we go. You see, when, once it's down, the flames actually spread around the bottom of the pan giving it even heat rather than just central. So it cooks really quite nicely. So I thought since I'm using a vintage stove, I thought I should probably cook something that's fairly vintage as well. Spam. Although this isn't a vintage tin of Spam because that possibly might not be edible anymore. Um, but Apart from using it as fishing bait normally, Spam can be quite a good lunch and meat, although a lot of people are kind of sickened by it. Um, here's a little trick I have for pulling out the, the meat. So I'm just going to do just a couple of slices just so I can demonstrate the stove in action. So save that for later. I put some olive oil in the pan and we'll put the Spam in the pan. Put it on the stove. And let it do its magic. So I'd say this Spam is pretty much ready to go. Um, so basically to turn it off, you just have to depressurize it. So we go back to this tap here. So all I do is turn it anti-clockwise, you'll hear it hiss, and the flames will go out. There we go. And that's it. Once it stopped hissing, you know there's no more paraffin able to go up to the burner, so it's gone out. Obviously it's still very hot, but the Spam is ready. So there you have it, the Primus stove. It does the job just fine as, as it would with a, a modern gas uh, camping stove. It's much the same, except the procedure is much more labor intensive. You've got to prime it, you've got to preheat it. You need to make sure you've got methylated spirits with you and of course paraffin. Um, I mean, you don't have to carry a bottle of paraffin around if there's already paraffin inside the stove, um, depending on how much you're wanting to use it. Um, but I can't help but think it's cheaper to run one of these than it is to keep buying those little gas cylinders for your modern camping stove. Um, and then you have to throw those away as well when you're done with them. But uh, at the end of the day, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It cooks. Mm. Spam's off. Thanks for watching. Looks like his tongue.